remember that one of the goals of Dublin Core is shared semantics, right? But shared by whom exactly? On the one hand, shared by the world at large. Right? The 15 elements of Dublin Core are the 15 elements of Dublin Core the world over. Right? Each element has a description that specifies what the scope of that element is, what it means, and those semantics of those elements are the same, again, the world over. But Dublin Core is intended to be generic, as I've said, it's intended to allow you to describe literally any kind of a resource. And because of that, it flattens out the semantics. Remember the author versus filmmaker versus painter example. Right? So because of that, there's a need to extend Dublin Core for specific user communities to describe specific kinds of resources, etc. So on the one hand, shared semantics by the world at large. On the other hand, shared semantics within a particular community of interest. So let's look at some of those communities of interest, right? On the Dublin Core website, there is a list of communities and there are quite a lot of them, communities that are working on extending Dublin Core for their particular set of requirements or particular set of resources. Right? We have scholarly communications, we have libraries, we have government and you know social tagging. All of these different communities with specific interests but that want to use Dublin Core as the basis on which to build their own metadata schemas. So let's look at government, for example, right? The DC government community is a forum for individuals and organizations involved in implementing Dublin Core metadata in a context of government agencies and international governmental organizations, right? That particular community has its own set of requirements. Perhaps it has its own sets of resources that need describing and they're going to build on top of Dublin Core to meet those particular needs. Let's look at the education community. Again, you know, forums for individuals and organizations involved in implementing Dublin Core, implementing Dublin Core and other learning resource metadata. Interesting, they're not restricting themselves to Dublin Core. In the education domain, Right? The education domain has some fairly specific requirements because, of course, you know, different levels of education require different kinds of teaching techniques, different topics, etc. So let's look at some of what the education community has built on top of Dublin Core. Right? First of all, notice that we've got the Dublin Core Metadata Initiative and IEEE LOM, right? I'm not going to get into the IEEE because that's a different metadata schema. We won't get into that now, but LOM stands for Learning Object Metadata. What the education community has done has created a set of what they call candidate properties. They are not yet risen to the level of canonical Dublin Core the way the 15 elements are, but we've got these set of properties, in other words, elements, that the education community has proposed. And these would get translated, like, for example, audience, that would then become dc.audience. And you can imagine a, say, a syllabus on the web that might have the meta tag dc.audience and then the value of, you know, whatever, college or second grade or something. Right? So the education community has done quite a lot of work to build on Dublin Core using the syntax of Dublin Core, but adding their own refinements, their own elements to specify things that are unique to their particular 
community of interest.